Hey, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to attach the weapon to the arm's mesh. This is going to involve the construction script. The construction script is one of those tabs that we haven't yet looked into. We're going to discuss sockets and how these are elements that can be added to a skeleton, allowing us to attach things to it. And we'll be adding a weapon skeletal mesh component to our character blueprint so that we could go about attaching that weapon to the mesh at that particular socket. So let's get started. So the aim here is to get our weapon attached to the mesh. So first we need to add a weapon to the character. I'm opening FPS character. And here in the blueprint in the components tab, I'd like to add a skeletal mesh component. So I'm going to click add and type skeletal mesh and select that. Now we can name this gun. And if I select gun, I can scroll down to the mesh section. And for the skeletal mesh, I'm going to click the drop down and select gun. Now if we click in the viewport, we see that the gun is right here at the center of our character. So that's not ideal. We want the gun attached to the mesh, and we can do that using sockets. Let's click on our character's mesh and click the browse icon next to the skeletal mesh property. Now we see that we're open to the folder in the content browser that contains our mesh. Let's double click mesh arms and click on the skeleton tree tab here. Now we see all the bones in our skeleton, and I'd like to click on the hand R bone. This is the bone I'd like to attach our weapon to. And to attach it, we can add a socket. Right click on hand underscore R and select add socket. And we see that down here under all the finger bones, we see hand underscore R socket. And if we right click on hand R socket, we have the option to add a preview mesh. Now a preview mesh doesn't exist once the game starts running. This just allows us to see what it would look like if we attached a mesh to this socket. Go ahead and search for gun and select gun, and we'll see that this is what it would look like if we attached the gun mesh to this socket. Now, again, this doesn't look ideal. We're gonna need to reposition the socket, but luckily we can do that. As you can see, I have the rotation gizmo for the socket, and I can rotate the socket here in the editor. Now, you might be in rotation mode, or you might be in one of the other manipulation modes, you can easily go into rotation mode with that rotation icon here at the top. Now I'd like to rotate this by 90 degrees, like so. And I'd like to translate it by hitting the W key or clicking on the translation icon, and now I can move the mesh. Now if snapping is enabled, you're gonna to want to disable it by clicking this icon at the top right. That way we can have more fine-tuned control over the position of the weapon. And we're gonna position the weapon so that it looks correct, and that way our socket location and rotation is positioned so that if we did attach a weapon, it would look like this. So let's go ahead and click Save. Now attaching a preview mesh shows what the weapon would look like here in the mesh editor, but it also shows the preview mesh when we take a look at animations. Let's go back out into our Blueprints folder and into character and animation. And if we double click our animation blueprint and go into our locomotion state machine and into our idle animation, we can double click this animation to open it up and here in the animation editor, we see the weapon. So we know that this is what it would look like if we attached a weapon to this socket. Now we can take a look at this pose and see if we need to make any adjustments to that socket location or rotation. For example, I see that I could probably rotate this a little bit to the left if I'm looking from this point of view. So I'm gonna go back into our mesh editor and rotate the socket very slightly counterclockwise. So I'm gonna hit E to get that rotation gizmo and I see that I'm in snapping mode. So I'm gonna disable snapping by clicking this icon and now I can have fine-tuned rotational control. Now I'm gonna save that and go back to our arms idle animation. And now I see that the weapon's rotation looks better. Now this can take some tweaking and adjusting. So sometimes you'll be going back and forth, repositioning the socket and looking at it in an animation pose until you get it just right. So now that we've positioned the socket correctly, we can attach the weapon mesh. I'm gonna close the arms idle animation and close the animation blueprint for now. 
and we're done positioning the socket. So I'm gonna click save here in the mesh editor and click close. So now the question is, how do we attach our weapon skeletal mesh component to that socket? Well, let's head over to the event graph and scroll up to the top and we'll get a begin play node right here. So right click and type begin play and we'll select event begin play. Now this will be fired off when the game starts. So anything we place here won't happen until we hit play. Now we want to attach our gun to that mesh socket. So I'm gonna hold control and click and drag the gun component variable here into the event graph. And now I have a node that gets me the value of the gun. And I'd also like the mesh, so I'm gonna hold control and click and drag in the mesh. Now to attach the gun to the mesh, there's already a special node that exists that will do this for us. It's called attach component to component. Now if I right click, and type in attach component to component, we see several versions here. And there are words in parentheses to the right. That's because attach component to component is a function that belongs to the scene component class. And all of these components here on our character blueprint are derived from the scene component in their hierarchy. Somewhere up the hierarchy of inheritance, one of their parents is the scene component class. Now, if I click on attach component to component gun, then you'll see that attach component to component appears with a gun node and it's plugged into the target. So that's how we can find and get a node directly in the event graph. However, if I take my gun node that I dragged in and click and drag off of its output pin and then type attach component to component, I now only see one of them and there are no parentheses. So when you're searching for a node here in the event graph, you get a different result when you're clicking and dragging out a value from a node versus when you just click in the graph somewhere and type something like attach component to component. That's because we have context sensitivity. When I'm just right clicking in the graph without anything selected, the pop-up is gonna show me anything that it thinks is valid. But when I drag off of the gun node and type the same thing, it's only showing me what it thinks is related to that thing I dragged off. Now you can uncheck context sensitive and now it'll show me everything that it finds. So that's a little nuance that you'll get used to when searching for and adding nodes here in the blueprint editor. Now, when I added the attach component to component node, it gave me a gun node, so I don't need this one anymore. Now, attach component to component is going to take a target. That's the component we'd like to attach to something. And it's going to give it a new attachment parent. And we specify that in the parent input. We're gonna attach the gun to the mesh. So we're gonna drag mesh into parent. Now this node takes an input called socket name. This way it knows where to attach our gun to our mesh. Now remember we added a socket to the skeleton and that socket has a name. Let's go back and find out that name. So I can click mesh and click the browse icon next to the skeletal mesh and open that back up. And if I scroll down, I can see that that hand socket is called hand underscore R socket. Now I'm not too attached to this name, so I'm gonna right click and select rename socket and simply call this hand socket and click save. So now I know the name of my socket is hand socket. So back here in the character blueprint, I'm gonna put hand socket for the socket name. Now, when you're attaching a component to a component, we have some additional inputs. For location rule, we can keep relative, which is not what we want because then our mesh would stay in its current position relative to the character. Keep world will keep its world position, but snap to target will snap the mesh directly onto that socket, and that is what we want. Now this is for the location, but we also have a rotation rule, and we also want to snap to the target rotation, which will mean our gun mesh will then take on the rotation of the socket. That's why we rotated the socket to the correct position on the skeleton. Now scale is less important. We didn't scale our socket or anything like that, and we really don't wanna change the mesh scale anyway. 
so we can leave keep relative, and weld simulated bodies will result in the physics bodies being welded together. Every mesh that's simulating physics has a physics body, and that's what the engine uses when detecting collisions and things like that. So from a physics standpoint, the meshes will be welded together. Now we can hook begin play up to attach component to component, and if we click compile and play, we now see that the mesh is attached to the arms. So this is exactly what we want. Now if we go back and click in the viewport, we'll see that the mesh is still in its original location. That's because we didn't attach it until the game started. We did all that in begin play, but we'd like to see the mesh where it's supposed to be even before the game starts. That's where the construction script comes into play. Let's click on the construction script tab right between viewport and event graph. Now the construction script is a very special place where we can perform actions before the game starts. The construction script will never run during the game, only before the game. So when does it actually kick off? Well, it kicks off whenever we change something on our blueprint. This includes changing its world location. So we'd like to see how the construction script works. Now this is gonna be your challenge. You're gonna use the attach component to component node just like we did in begin play, except you're gonna attach the weapon in the construction script instead of begin play. So move those nodes over into the construction script. Pause the video and give this a try. Okay, so back here in the event graph, I'd like to copy these nodes. Now I can hit control C and then delete them, or I can cut these nodes with control X and they're copied. Now back here in the construction script, I can use control V to paste them in and I'm gonna hook them up right here. Now let's go to the viewport and we see the mesh here in its original location. But if I hit compile, now the mesh is attached to the arms. Compiling is changing something which kicks off the construction script. So now our mesh is attached before the game has even started and it will keep that attachment. Let's hit play and now I see that the mesh is attached to the arms, which is exactly what I wanted. So in summary, we added a socket to the skeleton for our arms mesh, and then we attached our weapon to the mesh. We first did this in begin play, but we wanted the mesh to be attached before the game started so we could see the correct location of that gun while working in the editor. So we moved our attachment logic into the construction script. Great job. I'll see you soon.